Hello friends, in this video I am going to discuss the poem Christopher by S.T. Coleridge and I'll try to sum up uh, this poem by line by line analysis uh, though it's a very long poem but uh, I'll try to cover it in a very precise manner so uh, watch the video till the end so you get some benefit so first I'll tell you some basic uh, background information of this poem about this poem right Christopher it's a unfinished gothic ballad ballad you know it's a kind of poem uh, that narrates a story right so it is divided into two parts and conclusion to each part right part one conclusion of part one and part two conclusion to part two right so uh, we'll see detail analysis in this uh, story that it's a story of Cristobal right Cristobal she is the central female character right and um, I, I tell you the story right as we uh, do the line by line analysis you will come to know about Cristobal, Geraldine and uh, other characters as well right so just um, just just one very important uh, element in this poem is that is supernaturalism supernatural elements right Coleridge use supernatural elements in this poem so let's get started by line line, line by line analysis part one right it begins like this tis the middle of the night by the castle clock and the owls have awakened the crowing cock to with to with who right the hawk cane and the crowning cock how drowsily it grew sir leoline the barren reach hath a toothless toothless mastiff pitch from her canal beneath the rock she make it answer to the clock four for the quarters and twelve for the hour ever and a by shine and shower sixteen short halls not over loud some say she sees my lady's shout right so it's begun by the description of the castle of sir leoline who is the father of owner of the castle and father of cristobal i told you about cristobal right and then uh it ta then talks about right it was the middle of the night the atmosphere there right it was the middle of the night and in the night the owls are awakened you know <laughs> the owls they do not uh, uh, sleep at night right and the cock the rooster it it make a sound right uh, when it was down and then and then he, he talk about the mastiff beach it's it's a a beat breed a kind of dog right so which is a female dog you know so the dog at the castle right canal canal means dog house right so the beach dog the female dog it was it uh, at, uh, un, at uh, its place under uh, beneath the rock right uh, he, and it was he was silent right and everything was silent that night right and then further it says is the night chilly and dark the night is chilly but not dark the thin gray cloud is separate on high it covers but not hide the sky the moon is behind and at the full and yet she looks both small and dull the night is chill the cloud is gray tis a month before a month of may and spring comes slowly up this way the lovely Christabel warm her father loves so well what makes her in wood so late for for long for the castle gate right so in this line he, he talks about uh, that night the atmosphere of that night right it was a supernatural setting is there right and the night was chilly right uh, but not that much dark as there was moon there right though there was clouds but uh, the clouds unable to shed the light of the moon right the moon is behind and at full right and here she refers to Christabel. Christabel's look about small and dull right at that night right and then 
this lovely lady the krista pal right and um, her fathers love her so much and uh, what she he wonders that what she is doing uh, in the midnight so late uh, uh, in the castle guard she was she was intending to go outside of the castle in the midnight right a far lung far lung uh, is a distance you know one eight of the mile distance is far lung and we'll see uh, the next lines but uh, okay in the next lines he says she had a dream all uh, dreams all yesterday night of her own bed rot night and she in the midnight wood will pray for the will of her love that's far away she stole along she nothing spoke uh, the sighs she heaved were soft and low and now it was green upon the oak but most and rarest miss later she kneels beneath the huge oak tree and in silence prayed she right so in the midnight the crystal ball she get out of her castle right and because she had a dream right uh dream yesterday that night of her you know, bad road means fiance right so uh dream of her fiance and she she feared that uh, what might happen to him right and she wandered she worried right and in the midnight she get out of the castle into the woods to pray for him right and uh, again yes this lines uh, refer to the it right miss lotto refers to autumn right it's a autumn rare plant but it is evergreen right the atmosphere the plants uh, oak tree right beneath the oak tree she said there were mosses and this uh, other plants as well right she kneeled beneath and pray in silence the lady sprang up suddenly the lovely lady crystal it moan as her uh, as near as near can be but what it is she cannot tell on the other side uh, it seemed to be of the huge broad uh, breasted old oak tree the night is chill the forest bare is it the wind that moaneth bleak there is not wind enough in the air to move away the wrinkled curl from the lovely lady's cheek there is not a wind enough to will the one red leaf the last of it clan that uh, dances as often uh, as dance it can hanging on light and hanging on high on the topmost twig that looks up at sky against the description of the forest she she said beneath the that oak tree right and then uh, <coughs> she mourned she prayed right and then uh, so and it was against the atmosphere of that uh, night was described there the night is chill right chill cold you know and the forest bear means the leafless trees it was autumn yeah, right? right and the leaves have been shed right and fallen so the forest is bare leafless right and uh, there is not wind enough in the air it was silence not enough wind in the air and uh, lovely ladies refers to crystal ball hair right and uh, the red leaf the one red leaf again refer to autumn the last of his clan only few very rare leaves uh, are there and the other all the leaves they have just fallen shed right and um, she look up to the sky right sat there in lonely place right and next what happens we'll see hush beating heart of cristobal jesus jesus maria shield her well she folded her arms beneath her cloak and stole to the other side of the oak what sees she there right so it was hush silence right and uh, beating of her heart can be listened it was such a silence right and then um, she she prayed right uh, for uh, prayer to the jesus maria 
to shield her to protect her right and uh, so so what actually happens there you know about jesus and maria jesus maria is uh, what we called azrat maryam the mother of jesus right so it was uh, it was such supernatural and religious elements are there right some allusion to bible right reference to bible as well so she what she sees there right christabel what she sees she sees that there, there she sees a damsel bright dressed in this silken robe of white that shadowy in the moonlight shone the neck that met and that white robe when her stately neck and arms were bare her blue when feet and sandal wear and widely glitter hair and there the gems entangled in her uh, hair i guess dress frightful there to see a lady so richly clad as she beautiful exceedingly so here appears another character that is geraldine the character of geraldine is uh, a mysterious character right we cannot be sure and the writer did not uh, point did not make it clear that what actually her character was whether she was a normal human being or a spirit or a ghost right so he gives some hints about her character and we'll see later uh, in this poem right so here she refers to uh, Geraldine. She appears Geraldine, damsel, unmarried girl, right? She appeared in the dark and sulken rope of white, uh, right? Her uh, clothing has been described there, that beautiful clothing, right? And uh, the style in it means the majestic, the grand look of her right arms were bare her blue and feet right how how just glistering she is how beautiful she is and uh, exceedingly beautiful right so what happens next we'll see mary mother save me now said christabel and who art thou the lady strange maid answer Mead and her voice was faint and sweet. Have piety on my sore distress. I scarce can speak of feariness. Scratch for thy hand and have no fear. Saint Christopher, how comes thou here? And lady whose voice was faint and sweet did thus pursue you her answer me, right? So again mary i told you about that mary the mother of uh, jesus christ right hazrat maryam and she just rushed the crust up all by seeing the damsel the girl dying in this lonely forest she first she she seems uh, worried or fearful right and uh, so the lady she seems to be a strange like right and christabel asked her what art thou means who are you and what are you doing here right and her voice and then geraldine's geraldine she spoke right her voice was faint and sweet right and she says that have piety on my sore distress geraldine says that oh have sympathy for me i need help i am in distress right i am in misery worry right and then she said i scarcely can speak of weariness i am so tired so distressed that i can scarcely speak right and then christabel stretch her arms for help right offer her help right and we'll see what actually happens next my sire is of a noble line and my name is geraldine five warriors sees me yesternoon yestermorn me even me a maid forlorn they croaked they choked my cries with force and fright and tied me on palfrey white the palfrey was uh, as fleet as wind and they rode furiously behind they spurred a mane their steel their steeds were white and once we crossed the shade of night as uh, sure as heaven shall rescue me i have no thought what men they may 
nor do I know how long it is, for I have planned entrance. I was since uh, when the tallest of five took me from the palfrey back, a weary woman scarce alive, right? She muttered words in comrade spoke. He placed me under his under this oak, right? So she told uh, Christopal about her story, how she came here, right? And she says, date my sire, means my father is of a noble man, right? And uh, my name is Geraldine and these are uh, five warriors. They seized me yesterday morning, right? They seized me and took me here, right? They choked my cries, means shut my mouth and... Um, Palfrey white means palfrey is a horse, right? Kind of horse. So they took me on horse, right? And they rode up there and left me under this uh, under this oak tree, right? Alone. And they went away, right? And um, next, he, you know, she says that. So there was uh, a man, right, a tall man among them, the five of them, right, and she left her under that oak tree and they go and he said that he'll come back, right. He placed me under this oak and he swear they would return with haste. Whither they went, I cannot tell. I thought I heard some minutes pass, sound as of castle bells stretch for thy hand. Thus ended she and help a rich mate to flee, right? So <coughs> he just promised to uh, come back, right? And Chris uh, Geraldine has no idea where they went, right? And uh, so then Christabel stretched forth her hand and comfort comforted fair Geraldine of oh, well bright dame may you command the service of Sir Leoline and gladly our shroud our stout chivalry will he send forth and friends with to guide and guard you safe and free home to your noble father's hall and Christabel offer her mm, help right to comfort her and she says that oh you come with me right uh, in the services of Sir, my father, Sir Leoline, we have a castle there, right? We have uh, uh, chivalry, right? That grandness, and uh, we'll send forth, right? And we'll send a, a letter or message to your friends or family so that uh, you can go safely back to them, right? She rose and forth with steps they passed, that stout to be and were not fast. Her gracious stars the lady blessed, and the speck on sweet Christabel. All our household are at rest, the hall as silent as cell. Sir Leoline is weak in health and may not well awaken be, and will move as in stealth. And I beseech your courtesy this night to share your couch with me. Right, so uh, Geraldine Ross and uh, Christabel, she told her that uh, you came with me to my castle, to my room, right? And uh, at this night, in the night, in the midnight, we do not wake my father, Sir Leoline, he was sick and he was asleep, right? We'll just silently go to my room, share bed tonight, and... Uh, and uh, day after tomorrow, I'll introduce you to my father, right? And <clears throat> what, ex uh, what happens next, we'll see, right? They crossed the mouth and Christabel took the key that fitted well a little door. She opened straight all in middle of gate, the gate that was ironed with in and without where an army in battle array had marched out the lady sang belike through pen Christabel with might and men lifted her up a very read over the threshold of gate then the lady rose again moved and she were not in pen oh 
here these lines are important right here this this is the first indication of uh, girl dying characters whether she is a spirit or what uh, whatever a supernatural being or whatever she is right so <clears throat> they come to the castle gate right they cross they cross the moat the ditch right and here the little door opened right and then the ladies sang be liked through pain right Christopher with might and rain so what Christopher says there that after crossing that gate uh, the Geraldine as before she seems uh, in a distress weak but as she crossed the gate uh, Christopher observed that she felt very energetic and it was it seems like that she has no pain at all right and then uh, the lady rose again and moved she were no pain right so it was hint about the mysterious character of uh, Geraldine so free from danger free from fear they crossed the court right clad they were and Christabel devotedly cried to the lady by her side with the virgin all divine we had rescued thee from thy distress alas alas said Geraldine I cannot speak for weariness so free from danger free from fear they crossed the court right right glad they were so uh, uh, here Geraldine she felt uh, she, she uh, felt very grateful for this uh, help right which uh, Christabel take her out of misery of that forest and took her hair and comforted her right and uh, virgin all divine refers to mary right M mary maryam uh, the mother of jesus christ right she she's just just a woman virgin right and uh, <clears throat> by the help of that uh, the power of that mary uh, Christopher save her right help her right and so uh, they crossed the court means get into the castle and they were glad and happy right the Christopher as well as the Caroline and then outside her kennel the mastiff all lay fast asleep in moonshine called the mastiff all did not awake Yet she an angry moan did make what can ail the mastiff beach never till now she utter yell beneath the eye of Christabel perhaps it is the owlet's screech for what can ail the mastiff beach right <clears throat> again here is another indication or just suspicions about Geraldine character right about her uh, her, her uh, mysterious character that uh, the dog right the mastiff all means that dog the bitch as I already told you in the beginning so that the bitch that dog she, she, it didn't she didn't make noise uh, in normal days but uh, at this night that dog moan right that dog moan and uh, not yell but mourn some uh, some some sounds making sound of mourning right never till it utter yell it showed different and uh, different behavior uh, unlike usual right so Christopher was suspect suspicious about that right we'll see they pass the hall that echoes still pass as lightly as you will the brands were fled the brands were dying amid their own white ashes lying but when the lady passes there came a tongue of light a fit of flame crystal bells are lady's eye and nothing else saw she thereby save the boss of the shield of Sir Leo Lionel, which hung in murky old niche in the wall, or oh, softly treat, said Christabel, my father seldom uh, sleep at well, right? So they move into the castle, they pass the hall, right? And it was silent there. So Christabel told Geraldine to move silently uh, in order to not to awaken the sleeping. Um, 
surly or lion right brands here refers to words right uh, so they were flat and they were dying means the uh, body the body uh, structure right structures in the that castle right and then uh, so they'd make no voice right silence and uh, tongue of light a fit of flame so no, neither speak or no nor make any voice by uh, walking of uh, voice of that walking right and so softly treat means softly walk Cristobal said so that my father uh, didn't wake up sweet Cristobal her feet doth bare and jealous of the listening air they steal their way from stair to stair now in glimmer and now in gloom and now they pass the baron's room is still death with stifled breath and now have reached her chamber door and now dot geraldine press down the rushes of chamber floor right so they move further right with a bare foot so that uh, it did not make a noise in that midnight right they pass the baron's room means baron is that uh, sir leo line right they passed his room right it was still silent as death and they just stifled they just hold their breaths right so it was such a silent there and then the moonshine dim in the open air and not a moonbeam enters here and there without its light can see the chamber carved so curiously curved curved with the figure strange and sweet all made out of the curved span for a lady's chamber made the lamp with two fold silver chain it fastened to an angel's feet right so the moon the moonlight uh, shines dimly in the open air uh, that night right uh, not a uh, full but dim light right and the night is silent and it was dim light so they can hardly see right and then uh, the carefully figures in that room right they were strange but sweet and the ladies chamber right ladies chamber referred to the room of uh, crystals right they went to the room of crystal and the lamp was there to fold silver chain and fastened to angel feet it means that a chain fastened to angel like shape structure or statue in that wall right and lamp was just hang there and then <coughs> the silver lamp burns dead and dim but Christabel the lamp will trim she trimmed she trimmed the lamp and made it bright and left it swinging to and fro while Geraldine in rich plight sank down upon the floor below so yeah you know, uh, the silver lamp right it hanged from the wall right it burned dead and the, it gave a dim light right and then uh, was swinging and uh, Geraldine it reached plight right Geraldine against felt very weak right she sank upon the floor below uh, feeling very ill and weak oh weary lady Geraldine I pray you drink this cordial wine it's a wine of virtuous power my mother made it of wild flowers and will your mother pity me who am a uh, a maiden most forlorn so a oh, weary lady Christopher said oh weary lady or oh, tired or oh, misery uh, lady Geraldine you are sick so I pray and Christopher said I pray I pray you right I pray you you just drink this um, wine cordial wine you know, which was made by the mother of uh, Christabel out of wild uh, made of wild flowers right to heal the wounds right it has got such powers uh, so uh, she offered that to Geraldine and uh, Geraldine uh, asked that uh, 
will your mother pity me means that uh, this this uh, vine it worked on me right then Christabel answer who is me who is me she died uh, she died the hour that uh, I was born I have heard the gray hair fairy tale fairy tale tell how on her deathbed she did say that she should hear the castle bells strike twelve upon my wedding day oh mother dear that thou wert here i would said girl dine she were and then christabel told uh, her about her mother that uh, she died the hour when christabel was born right and um, on her deathbed she, she just wished that uh, she should hear the castle bell strike twelve upon the wedding day or wedding day of Christopher. she w wished that right and then what actually happens next but soon with the altar voice she said of oh, wandering mother peak and pine i have power to bid thee flee alas what else poor girl dine why stares she with the unsettled eye can she the bodiless dead espy right so then soon uh, Geraldine she altered her voice changed her voice her tone and she said that of oh, wandering mother right said that uh, she praising her mother oh you got such amazing wonderful mother right mm, peak and bind me disappeared your mother has disappeared she passed away and i have power to bid the flee right and then uh girl Diane says that uh, i have powers i have powers some powers to uh so so i have such got such a powers that to bid the flee means that uh, to go away right what else poor girl dine she stares with uh, she with unsettled eye then uh, she stares to Christopher right and gazing her can she the body less dead a spy a spy is glimpse or god's uh, sight of right so it seems like uh, she's she's bodiless or then uh, christopher she was just suspicious about her character that uh, she's bodiless that a spy it seems like she just uh, got a glimpse or caught the sight of and why with hollow wise christ she of woman of this hour is mine thou through thou her guardian spirit be of woman of this given to me right so <coughs> it just give a hints about uh, geraldine then maybe geraldine is the uh, is the guardian spirit of cristobal right or just uh, just come uh, the guardian spirit or just the spirit of her mother right though her guardian spirit be of women of given to me then christabel knelt by the lady's side and raised to heaven her eyes so blue alas said she this ghastly right dear lady it had wildered you the lady wiped her moist clawed pro and faintly said this over now right so Christopher she knelt beside uh, Carol Dine right and raised to heaven her eyes so blue just just gazing at the sky <clears throat> right and she just uh, regret and said Allah said she this ghastly right right this uh, uh, she just just remorse and regret about uh, the death of her mother right dear lady it had wildered you right the lady refers to Geraldine. The lady wiped her moist called brow, right? Brow is this forehead, right? So, and uh, the Geraldine soothed Christabel, right? 
wiped her moist call bra forehead and friendly said it's over now calm down right again the wild flowers wine she drank and fair large eyes can glitter bright and from the floor uh, where on she sang the lofty lady stood upright she uh, was most beautiful to see like a lady a fair country right again uh, girl dine she take a sip of that wine and feel some energetic right and then uh, the lofty means high grand like and the grand this refers to the lofty uh, lady refers to girl dine right the grand lady she stood upright right and she was most beautiful to see like lady of far country she felt energetic grand right after uh, drinking that uh, wine and thus the lofty lady spoke right and then then she spoke geraldine spoke that all all they who live in the upper sky do love you holy christabel and you love them for their sake and for the good which me befell even i in my degree will try fair maiden to requite uh, requite you well and now unrob yourself for i may pray or yet i uh, in bed i lie right and then she just soothing the crystal ball and she says that oh just just uh, look at this guy all day all day who who just passed away who lived in the upper sky means in the heaven they passed away they loved you your mother loved you right remember that and you love them too right for their sake and good be be fell right and good time will come right it happens for our goodness right and uh, and then she says that uh, i'm i'm going to change my clothes you just you just uh, close your eyes or say that but unrob yourself right and uh, geraldine is saying that i'm uh, i'm just changing clothes or unclothing you just you just uh, close your eyes or f- for something you just give uh, give me some privacy right for i must pray yet in bed i lay right and then what happens quiet crystal ball so let it be and the lady bed did she right and she did what the lady what the caroline order or command right her gentle limbs did she undress and let down in her loveliness but through her brain of will and who so many thoughts moved to and for that when it were her lids to close so halfway from the bed she rose and on her elbow did uh, recline to look at the lady geraldine right beneath the lamp the lady bow and slowly roll her eyes round then drawing in her um, breath aloud like one that shudder she unbound the cincture cincture right the cincture the belt from the beneath her breast her silken robe the inner vest dropped to her feet and full in view behold her bosom and half her side a sight of dream of not to tell Oh, shield her, shield sweet crystal ball. Right. So here, uh, Geraldine, she was about to undress, right? And then, uh, and then, then what actually happens is here that uh, uh, crystal ball got a glimpse of one side uh, of the body of uh, geraldine while she was undressing and she was amazed at the sight of her body right that how, how majestic it is and 
some she has some uniqueness some difference right move and forth and uh, lead to close means eyelid to close she half uh, close her eyelids but see a glimpse of her body right and then then beneath the lamp the lady bore right beneath that lamp the uh, lady the girl dine she bowed down to change her clothes and she wrote, slowly she rolled her eyes round and uh, she just untied the belt the cincture the belt from beneath her breast right and then her uh, silken robe and inner vest dropped and she was full in view means she was fully undressed or naked you can say right and behold means to see seeing this side her bosoms and half her side it, it was just a sight uh, of a, a dream like for Christopal right it was uh, such, such an unusual sight for Christopal right and then in the next line the girl died she prayed for the protection of Christopal and she will see yet girl dine nor spoke nor steers of oh, what a strike and look was hers deep from within she seems halfway to lift some weight with a sick as a and eyes the maid and six delay then suddenly as one did not defy it, defy it collect herself in scorn and pride and laid down by maiden's side and in her arms the maiden she took oh well a lady and with low voice and doleful look these words did say right so <clears throat> Geraldine she didn't spoke after that right nor spoke nor stir right and what a stir what a strike and strike and look it was uh, of that look of her right deep and within uh, within she seems halfway and sick as a uh, right uh, it does it does uh, the weight with sick as say so it was an unsuccessful attempt you can say a try or struggle right to what to lift herself to lift her weight and eyes the maid uh, and seek delay and then suddenly uh, suddenly as one defied means disobey it refers to Cristobal right Cristobal she she just uh, it make an unsuccessful attempt uh, to 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 see uh, see Carol Dine characters or to analyze her right correct herself in scorn and pride and then after getting undressed Carol Dine she collect herself in pride and laid down by maiden side means laid down by the side of Cristobal and they just slept right and then and then uh, and with the low voice and doleful look these words did say in the touch in the touch of these bosoms in the touch of these bosoms there worketh a spell which is uh, lord of thy utterance christopal thou knowest tonight and will now tomorrow this mark of my shame this seal of my sorrow but only thou wearest for this is alone in the power to declare that in the dim forest thou hearts a low morning and founds a bright lady surpassing fair and didn't bring her home with thee in love and charity to shield her and shelter her from the damp air <coughs> right so here in this lines uh Geraldine was speaking and she says this word this word did she say that in the touch of uh, this bosom this heart bosom means this chest or heart you can say right there worked a spell she just put a spell on Christopher see the supernatural elements and here we can 
uh, guess that the Geraldine was a kind of a witch, right? Who pull, who just uh, make a spell, right, on crystal ball, right? Uh, a magic or spell, you can say, and uh, right, and uh, so that. Uh, Christabel forget about when she wake up what she what she has saw or observe about uh, Geraldine's character right so now we'll move to conclusion of part one conclusion of part one it goes like this it was a lovely sight to see the lady Christabel when she was praying um, at the old oak tree and amid the jack shadows of mossy leaf uh, less bows kneeling in moonlight to make her gentle vows so uh, just here Geraldine remembers or recollect the memories that uh, how lovely it was to see uh, Christabel beneath that oak tree praying right her slender palms together pressed uh, heaving heaving sometimes on her breast her face resigned to bliss or bell her face or call it fair not pale uh, and both blue eyes more bright than clear each about to have a tear right against that description uh, she just remember or recollect the memories so that the, the night she met Christabel beneath that oak tree kneeling in the moonlight her gentle vows vows are pledges or promises or prayers for her fiance right and her slender palms and then uh, her breasts uh, and face and blissful look right and with open eyes, oh, wow, is me asleep and dreaming fearfully, fearfully dreaming. Yet I was, I was dreaming that alone, which is all oh, sorrow and shame. Can this be she, the lady who knelt at the oak tree? She just looking uh, the girl, and she look at the sleeping. Uh, <coughs> crystal ball and remembering or recollect the memories the night uh, they met and she wondered that whether actually she was that lady who met me there asleep and she was asleep right Christabel was asleep and dreaming fearfully and uh, right she wondered the uh, girl and she wondered that the lady who knelt at the altar it was uh, really she and lo, the worker of these harms that hold the maiden in her arms seems to slumber still and mild and mother her child. So, <clears throat> Geraldine just hold Christabel in her arms and they slept like a mother. A mother took her child in her arms, grabbed her and slept. Right, or you can hear, we can guess that, uh, we can make a conjecture or inference or guess that maybe uh, it was the spirit of her mother. You, we are not sure about the character of Geraldine, right? We just make uh, our own guesses from these hints, right? Uh, she, her character was mysterious, I already told you. A star had set, a star had risen, O oh, Geraldine, since arms of thine have been the lovely lady's prison, O oh, Geraldine, one hour was thine, thou had thy will by, by, by turn, by train and trill, the night birds all that hour were still, but now they are jubilant anew from cliff and tar to woo to woo to woo to woo from the wood and fell right so in this lines uh part is saying that uh the star, the star has said it was uh it has it was about downtime right it was about uh, morning time right and star had uh, said right and Geraldine 
Carol Dine, she is still holding Cristobal in her arms, right? And 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 Carol uh, Dine, one hour was dying. So Carol uh, Dine now she says that uh, uh, Cristobal was about to wake now, right? And thou still has will thy train and real. So it was.